G'day guys, welcome to me lab and to this our ninth installment in our Wolfenstein 3D Godot 4 tutorial series. What are we getting up to this time? Well, I think it's probably about time we even the odds a little bit and made a way for our player to lose health. What do I mean by our player losing health? Well, we're going to do this in a very similar way to we did it with our guards, right? So we're going to add a Raycast 3D to our guards, but we've got to do things a little bit differently there. We're going to add uh, a health variable for our player, and we're also going to add an update on our HUD that we started making so that we know what our current health is. So let's jump on into Godot, um, do our WWSS, all that jazz, and then go through what we actually need to do today. Well, so far we have our world, our enemies, and our weapons all set up. We're going to be adding play player health and we're also going to um, make that visible in our head up display too. Why? Well we need to round this game out, it's got to be fair, we've got to be able to die as well as the enemy. You're going to need to be able to understand and apply how to add uh, nodes to your scenes as well as to update our scripts. Your success today will look like your heads up display displaying your health and your player able to die. All right, well, let's start off with our HUD, our heads up display, and actually getting some health shown there. So if we go to start with to, well, actually come to think of it, we should probably actually set up the health first, otherwise we'll have nothing to show. So let's just quickly create our variable. So in your player script, var player underscore health right up the top there with our other variables equals 100. Simple as that, right? So this little line here I've put in at number 10, var player health equals 100. That's a good starting sport. Sport, spot. All right, save that. Go to your UI script and also grab your UI 2D view as well. So this is what we've made so far for our heads up display. Basically, we've just got a blue bar and our little knife there. So we're gonna play around with that now. So I think the best thing for us to do, make sure you got the UI scene selected rather than the player scene, because remember the UI is a child of the player, but we wanna edit it in its own scene. So here in our UI scene, we've got so far just our animated Sprite 2D, which is our uh, weapon, and then just this color act, which is essentially gonna act as a background for other things we're gonna do. So here's where we're gonna start messing around. So let's add a new label. And then let's add another new label. Okay, uh, that one doesn't need to be a child. So we'll make both of these children of the UI rather than of anything else. The first one I'm just gonna call um, health in caps like that. And the next one's just gonna be an actual label. So um, that doesn't really matter too much. So our label label, I wanna come over here and write the word, actually all caps, I think, health. Um, and so you can see it appearing down here. That's not where we're gonna want it though, right? So let's mess around with a few things. Let's grab our um, little guides here, which sort of helps us center what we're doing. Um, and we're gonna drop this guy in here. Let's just sort of make a bit of space and stuff. All right, so at the moment, this is sort of set up really defaultly. So with our labels in Godot, we don't actually have all that much flexibility right out of the box. We need to tinker a little bit. So you can see here, we've got our spot where we can add our text called health, but then sort of everything else is a bit boring, right? So um, this one here that says label settings, if you click on that empty and click new label settings, it gives us a few new options though. So now we've got this label settings here. If we click on it again, you now can play around with your font, your outline, your shadow and things like that. So that's what I wanna do. Let's go to our font um, and let's just up this size significantly so um, we can sort of see what we're doing here. Um, we can also mess around with things like um, orientation and all that. So like this one here, vert, uh, horizontal, well, I'd rather that be centered like that, right? We could also, if we want to, add some outlining and shadowing. So let's um, just have a bit of a play around with what that would be like. So let's um, get all of these sets. So we've got like a black color like that, so zero, zero, zero. Um, and then you can see our outline. You can now faintly see it around the word health. If I increase it, you'll see it more boldly, right? So we can do an outline. We can also do shadows for them as well if we want to. Um, so if we want that same sort of black color, maybe we want it to be, you know, a, a darkish um, tint. Let's uh, ram our outline down a bit so we can actually notice our shadow a bit more. What if we made that one like two and two? Now you can sort of see it there. We don't actually need any of this. This is just for me to sort of show you how it all works. So I thought we'll leave it there, but you can play around with your font properties. You just gotta know how to do it, right? So to do that, when we had our label selected, we went to the label settings that currently set empty. We um, put in some new label settings and then we were able to edit those. So that's all that's happened there. Now for our other one, the one we've actually called health, let's, uh, let's get that in the same spot effectively. Um, and then we can sort of mess around with that. But we're gonna control this one in our code as opposed to 
um, just by tinkering with its options in the inspector. Let's just save what we got so far. Now let's have a look at our uh, script for our UI. So in our UI, we now want to be able to update our health, right? So that's the whole idea of all of this. So what we want to do, I think at the end of our process function, we're going to add in a call to uh, update our health, but we're going to need to make that function first. So let's come down here and go funk and we're going to call it update player health. That seems like a good and logical name to me. And then what we want to do, we want to grab this particular um, label. So we're going to grab that, drag it down here. So this is what we're going to be editing, our health uh, label. And what we want to put in there, well, we want to edit the text. So dot text, it's a label. So that's, a, that's an automatic thing we can do. Just go dot text. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go um, and edit the string. We want to get the parent, which is going to be our player. Because remember, this UI is a child of our player. Uh, get our parent like that. And then we want to go player health like that. So health string, sorry, health text should be the, the string that is located in this player health variable in our get parent uh, or in our parent node, if that makes sense. So we want to populate this particular health label, this one here, with text that we draw from that particular location. All right, I think that should make sense. Let's save that. Now, if you run it, we should actually see a bit of that showing on the screen, right? So down here, we've got a health, but we don't have anything showing up here yet. All right, let's play with that. I think the obvious reason why we don't have that is because we haven't actually put in the function. So we wrote this function, then I didn't do anything with it. So let's add it in up here. So we want to go update player, you player health. So that way we're running it all the time and it will always constantly update. Now, one thing we haven't done is mess around with the font for the health yet, but we'll go in, we'll have a look at it working and then we'll show you why we need to play around with it. So let's press play. And now we can see it here, health, and then the, the tiny little 100. So that's what we're gonna edit, edit now, okay. So to play around with how that is gonna be displayed, let's make sure we've got our, our health um, one off selected there and then we're going to go back over to our label settings where it says empty click on that click on new label settings and then click on it again and now we've got some options to play with so we can leave the font as whatever the default is but we're going to want to increase this um, significantly um, and we also want to play around with things like our alignment right so with this one we want it to be centered and bottom because this one's underneath um, so I've put that at 25 pixels let's go in and have a bit of a look at what that looks like now all right, that's not too bad. Maybe we can make it a little bit bigger as well though. Um, we've got a bit of room to play with still. So maybe something like 32, let's jump in and have a look. Yeah, I think we need to just tweak this a little bit because it's a bit low maybe. So let's jump into our 2D scene where we can see all this. Now let's move our health um, word up. And then what we can do is find our um, player um, health variable print out there, move that up. Now let's have a look at what we got. All right, I'm pretty happy with that for now, but of course you can tweak this to your heart's content. The point here was just to show you how to tweak it and where those options are. All right, so that's part one done. I think probably our next best bet is to actually add some uh, structure to our player's script that will actually allow for our player to lose health. So we've created a, a way to, to update what our health is on the screen, but we haven't really made a way for the health to actually change. So what we want to do is let's go to our player scene, let's go to our, uh, let's go to our script rather than our uh, 3D view, and let's just scroll down the bottom and we're gonna put a whole new function in down here. Uh, so we're going to have a function that we are going to call damage. So this is for our player to take damage. And what we want to do is um, we want to say player health um, take away 10. And then what we want to do is also print our player health just to make sure that that is working. So basically a debug statement. Um, and then we want to be able to uh, lose the game essentially. So what we could say is if player health is uh, less than or equal to zero, what we wanna do is just for now, let's just queue free. We'll come back and fix this up a lot later on, but that's the general idea. So our damage function, what we're doing here is we're saying player health, take away 10, um, print whatever the current player health is, and then if it is less than or equal to zero, queue free, delete our player from the game, end the game. All right, so that's what we're gonna do in our player script, but none of that makes any difference until we set up our guards to actually be able to do that damage. And we're gonna do it in the same way we did the, uh, the guard damage, right? So we actually call 
the um, damage on the guard from our player script, which is what happens here, remember? So we said if it has the method die, get collider die. Um, so the, the ray get collider is whatever the ray is colliding with, which would be the guard, run the die function within that particular object. So we're gonna do this the same way for our player. We're gonna run this damage function in our player when our guard is shooting us. All right, so we got that saved. We need to go to our guard now and do some work over here. So if we scroll on down, we, there's that die function. So we're gonna do something in here that's gonna do something similar, right? And we're basically gonna edit this part of our script here where we're attacking. And we also need to add in a ray, a ray cast, which uh, we need to go to our guard and then click on our guard's root node and then click on the plus and look for a ray cast 3D. There it is there, so we've added that in. Now we're going to play around with our code a little bit. So um, we want to, oh, actually we should set up the properties of our Raycast first, almost forgot. So our Raycast is selected, come over here, our target position. We don't want Y to be negative one, we want it to be zero. And we actually want our um, Z to be 20, not negative 20, just 20. And I want to actually scroll up the top here and we're going to change our attack range to 20 as well, just to make sure we can see it all working well without them getting all the way to us. Um, all right, so now I think we're ready to do some work in here. So what we want to do um, is attacking is true. So when our guard is shooting and it's played that sprite, we want to um, check and see if our Raycast 3D, so if Raycast 3D dot is colliding and our rake we could have made a little variable for this to make this easier but you know dot get the collider uh, dot has method so it's very much the same as what we did before but instead of uh, die it's going to be damage uh, and then we're going to go what are we going to do next so if our raycast 3d is colliding and the collider has, or the thing we're colliding with has a method called damage. Well, we're gonna to wanna to call that, aren't we? So then we're gonna go Raycast 3D uh, dot get collider dot damage. All right, that there should be what we need to do to make this work. So uh, let me just double check a few things. We've got our attack range at 20, we've got our Z at 20. All right, I think we're pretty close to testing this out. So let's jump in and see what happens. Okay. Oh, I've crashed it already. All right, so attempt to call function has method in base null instance on a null instance. So what's going on here? So we've got our if raycast 3D is colliding and our raycast 3D dot get collider dot has method. That sounds like it should work. Do, do, do. Let me have a think. And as always, it's a tiny little typo that I've done. So it's on this line here, line 40. If Raycast 3D is colliding, I forgot to add our little brackets there. So if we add those in and now run it, we should see ourselves getting shot to death from a distance. And there we go. Excellent. So we now have it set up so that our player can die as well and our health is displayed on the screen so we know what's happening. Let's uh, let's jump on in and see if we can actually win this particular fight because uh, it's it's not going to be an easy, easy uh, game, I don't think. Gosh. See, the problem with these old, old ones is that it's hard to actually line up sometimes. There we go. All right, I managed to survive. Okay, so it's working. We can kill our enemies, they can kill us. We've got our health displayed on the screen. We die when we get to zero. I think that's everything we really need for today. Otherwise, we'd be getting a bit chunky. So let's have a look at our must, may, and our might. Well, you must update your player script and your UI script, um, as well as your guard script. There was a lot of little script bits. You've got to add those labels to your UI scene, and you've also got to um, make sure that you add the raycast to your enemy scene as well. Um, what you may like to do is, as I quite often say, keep expanding your world, create more interesting rooms. Maybe add new enemies that have different distances they can shoot from, things like that. Um, and we are soon going to be getting to our collectibles after we've gotten through this bit. So have a think about those as well. Well, your game is now getting pretty close to a recognizable Wolfenstein clone. We can shoot, we can get shot, enemies can die, we can die. We've got a world to explore. We've got guns and ammo and things like that. So we're getting there. Okay, I think it's finally time we tackle our collectibles in our next episode. And the quote I'd like to leave you with today is from George Bernard. Shaw and he once said we don't stop playing because we grow old we grow old because we stop playing 
Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.